the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Nissen, and today I am lucky enough to have with me Lucy Forstein. Lucy, why don't you give us a 60-second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Well, I guess my uh, elevator pitch would be uh, more about my background because I've evolved into writing. I've always uh, written something uh, someplace along the line, but uh, I actually have my master's degree in family therapy. And so I'm a clinical psychotherapist and was uh, doing that uh, full time until about three and a half years ago. And then I decided that enough was enough. I'd done it for 33 years. And so I still work with people on the side, but um, I write more now. I do um, a a health newsletter and I work with people consulting uh, on healthy conditions. And then I have a podcast called the Synergy Connection Show. But you've moved into writing and I believe you've written a book, is that correct? I have, Uh, it's called The Adventures of Miss Twigs and Company. All right, you've got to give me some information on that title. All right, so the way the title evolved is about 33 years ago, uh, I was out visiting my family in Santa Monica, California, and we went into a little shop called Twigs. And uh, it, uh, in the shop, there was a mouse, and she had been handcrafted. And so I had been working on my book But just, you know, in the very beginning stages, I had the characters and it just so happened that the three main characters are mice. And so when I saw this little mouse and she was handcrafted, I went, oh my gosh, she's just amazing. But she was very expensive. And so the man who owned the store said, why don't you come back the day after Christmas? I'll have everything in the store half off. So I tucked that away in my memory bank And about a half hour before closing time, I remembered it. And so we charged over to his shop and the cupboard was bare. There was hardly anything left in his store, but I'm highly intuitive. And I knew she was still in the store. And what I felt was that she was above my head. So I asked him what was above, uh, you know, that you could see that was like a loft. And I just asked him, you know, what is up there? And he said, well, that's where most of our bookkeeping and supplies and et cetera, you know, are located. And I said, well, I said, this mouse is up there. I don't know how she got there, but that's where she is. So he looked at me very strangely, walked up the steps and came down with her about three minutes later and said, I have no idea how she got there. And I said, well, now I know the title of my book. It's the adventures of Miss Twigs and company. So I put the name of his store into her last name. That's a wonderful story. I love the intuition that you were able to just in, not imagine, but no, you sense that it was there. That is a crazy, crazy story. And who's your target audience? Actually, um, it doesn't have an age limit. Um, I would say that if you have a child under the age of maybe six, it would not be advised. But from six until 96, the story works. And I've had a lot of adults. I had recently a CPA who is in her early 50s that bought it. And she called me a few weeks ago and said, I have to tell you how much this book meant to me and all of the things I learned from reading it. So it has been used in classrooms and teachers use it for conflict resolution. They use it for um, creating um, imaginary characters, uh, vocabulary, um, you know, just talking about what's next uh, because a lot of kids, you know, have to learn how to do that in story writing so that you have a beginning, a middle and an end. And when I was taking it through the classroom, testing it out, I would only read about 10 pages and then I would stop and I'd say, okay, next time we're going to pick up here, but what do you think is going to happen? And so I'd get all of these ideas from, you know, the kids that were listening to it. And then when I came back, maybe a week later, I would say, where did we leave off? And they all knew exactly where we left off. They all had the understanding of where the story was going. I am fascinated that your research audience, so to speak, were classroom kids. What, what grade were they? 
Uh, the ones that I worked with uh, for this were fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. So I had the end of elementary and the beginning of middle school. What a great way to sample your work to see uh -huh. who is appreciating it. Uh, very much so. Um, and you know what's fun is they actually they they couldn't wait until the book was actually a book. And so initially it became an ebook and people would download it onto their Kindles or Nooks. But now it's a hardcover. And that's what people told me that they wanted after it came out as an ebook because they wanted to sit with a child or make it a family read. And so it becomes a conversation on understanding how we create our reality through our thoughts which is why it can be used for conflict resolution. And in today's world in particular, with the political climate, with COVID ID, with everything that's going on, it really helps kids know that if you stay in a fear-based type thinking, then you're gonna get more of the same. And so what do you wanna do differently to make the world different where you are? Because that's all we can do. It's, it's right where we are and nowhere else. Are there illustrations attached to your book? Yes, um, the person who did the illustrations, I was so lucky. Um, I was referred to a man by the name of Mike Woodcock. It's W-O-O-D-C-O-C-K. And Mike is one of the primary illustrators with Universal Studios in Orlando. And so I got to meet with him prior to, you know, getting the book launched uh, into written form. And it took us about, I'm gonna say a month and a half to gel because his characters for Universal don't look anything like I wanted my characters to look like. And so I kept coming back to him and he'd give me a new one and I would go, man, nah, that's not quite it. And so I finally started going online and finding these characters because the book is set in 1946 in England. And so right at the very beginning of the book, the war is coming to a close and we needed to make sure that everything was relevant and accurate. And so um, the mice, I wanted to look like people in a way, you know, they, they are mice, but at the same time, they needed to express empathy and understanding and fear and all of the emotions that people have. And so that had to come through his drawings. And he did an amazing job, just an absolutely amazing job. But like I said, it took us about a month and a half. And there was a point in time where I think both of us thought, oh, this is not going to work. <laughs> it's already won second place. It won silver for his illustration on the cover. Why 1946? Um, I'm not exactly sure. And for people that are listening to this, they may, some of them scratch their heads, but as a psychotherapist, I'm well aware that there are such things as past lives that we may or may not live. And there are things about this book that I knew and I, I didn't understand how I knew them. Uh, one of the big ones is the mice are born in a church called St. John's and that's a common name. You know, St. John's, a lot of churches are called St. John's, but this was in um, an area of England where, you know, it's pretty rural. And um, so the mice kind of hang out basically in the church at the end of World War II looking for treats, but also they begin to realize they can communicate with some of the parishioners and the children. And when I did the background research for the website, what I found is not only did the church exist, but every single pew had a mouse carved on it. And so that blew me away because how would I have ever known something like that? It turns out that the man who created the pews um, used to laugh and say, I'm as poor as a church mouse. And so all of his furniture, his wooden boxes, and then these church pews were created by this Mr. Mouse Man. And so that is where the mice are born. It's where they develop their plan for going out into humanity to teach that our thoughts create our reality. I love the various connections here. We had the 
the twigs shop with the mouse. Yes. And now we have the church pews with the mice. Yes. I so were when you imagine this from the very beginning, there were always mice. Uh, there were always mice. Um, yes, and I knew there were three of them. And part of that, I think, had to do with my understanding at that time of the Trinity. Um, and so I wanted a threesome. But uh, it evolved into so much more because I was just beginning my career as a psychotherapist as the book evolved. And so there were so many people that I met uh, that were professionals along the way that were clients who seemingly had their life all together. They were successful in every possible way you could measure success. But at the same time, they were depressed. They were anxious. They you know, had all kinds of other issues, uh, some of them physiological issues that were the result of emotional conditions. And so I began to understand as I was putting the book together that our thoughts definitely create our personal reality and how the mice could begin to teach this at a level with adults as well as with children. Uh, in the book, um, the mice actually spend the majority of their time with a little boy that's 11 whose name is Brian. But prior to meeting Brian, they had actually been with the train depot master. And Brian absolutely loves this train depot master because uh, Mr. Wagner always has time for Brian. And, you know, not a lot of adults do. Uh, it turns out at the very end of the book that Brian is about to understand that the mice had visited Mr. Wagner previously and left a little blue crystal for him to always remember the lesson. For Brian, they're leaving a little yellow crystal. And that has to do with your solar plexus and understanding who you are evolving to become. And with Mr. Wagner, the blue was the throat chakra. And that was understanding how that he could speak his grief because his wife had accidentally been killed in a bombing when she went into London. And so the story morphs, it winds and twists through all ages because we always are learning, we're always growing and we're always experiencing life in different places. Lucy, this is a fascinating conversation. It is one that I really want to go look at your book and, and get to know these mice a little bit more. I How can people get in touch with you and how can people find the book? Um, well, they can get in touch with me just by, um, I'll just give my personal email. It's Lucy, L-U-C-Y dot Forsting, F-O-R-S-T-I-N-G at gmail.com. If they want to, uh, you know, send me a message, you know, I do respond to correspondences, obviously. Um, the book is on Amazon, so um, they can get there. They can also go to the book's website, which is Miss, M-I-S-S, Twigs, T-W-I-G-G-S dot com. And if they type that into Google, it'll take them right to the website and there's a link directly to Amazon in there, but they can also see a short video on how Mike created that um, picture. If, if you want to look at it that way, one of the illustrations has the pew with the little mouse carved into it that I took a picture directly from St. John's church and sent it to Mike. And I said, I want this pew and I want the mice underneath it as though they're listening to the people that are in the church at the time. And so he created that picture, it's in the book, but he also does a little video that shows how it was illustrated. So the creation of the illustration, it's a short little video. And um, so I thought that would be fun to have on the website. So there's a lot of information about who I am, my background, but that's a great way to get into Amazon easily to find the book. Well, thank you for all that information. Are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? Sure. Sure. All right. This one's a tough one. What's your favorite color? Uh, probably blue. Blue. That's my favorite color too. So I love when people say blue. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very good for writers because your, your blue color is your throat chakra color. And what do we do as writers? We express ourselves. 
you were to go back in time and take another high school class, what would it be? A high school class. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I'd probably take world history. I hated history when I was growing up. It was incredibly boring, but I think today they would make it super interesting with all of the uh, technological abilities that we have. And so it would be more visual. It wouldn't just be reading a lot of boring facts. So probably world history. And finally, what's the one task you hate doing but have to complete every week? Hmm. Um, maybe vacuuming. <laughs> and I have to do it more than once a week because I have a cat. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, I don't like vacuuming much either. And my husband <laughs> doesn't seem to mind. So he vacuums and I just do all the dishes. <laughs> oh, that works. <laughs> we, we trade, we trade. Well, Lucy Forstein, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. I hope you do like the book and I hope that uh, everybody who's listening finds it a, a wonderful read because like I said, what, what do we need more than ever is to understand that as we think, we create. So let's start creating a healthier environment, a healthier world, a kinder, more gentle world out there for all of us. Great words of advice. <laughs> Everyone, you have been listening to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast. Allison out. Lucy Forstein is the author of The Adventures of Miss Twigs and Company and is Lucy's effort to help children as well as adults understand how thoughts actually do create the reality we experience every day. For more information about Lucy, Visit her on the web at the adventures of Miss Twigs and Company.com. For more information about the Florida Writers Association, visit us at FloridaWriters.net. <laughs>